Please, if someone wants to ask some questions, I would be very happy. Yes, please. What was the response that you got to the Torah? I, I watched on Facebook, I, I saw on Facebook about the, the rainbow, for, like the Israeli yeah. rainbow parade. Like, what was your response? How did you okay, that? so first of all, that's the video. I, I've been asked, a, a student, one a student asked me a question about the, the gay parade that uh, was in, uh, in Tel Aviv. Few Actually, it happened one week before of that horrible massacre in uh, Orlando. And he asked me that question, and I just answered to him that we cannot judge, we cannot understand people just by their actions. I know people that from the age of three, age of four, they have those struggling from inside that they feel connection to their own sex and, and not to the opposite sex. And those people are gay from birth. It's not people that sinned so much that now they became gay or something like that. So I just explained that you need to have the patience and the understanding that people are going through emotional processes and you cannot ignore. For an example, I said over there that, that there was one woman that she lived her life with an a, a, abusing husband that was treating her very, very bad, and she fell in love with the woman. And she felt loved by that woman. And okay, the Torah is saying that it's not allowed, I understand, but also to look at that woman and to understand that she suffered all of her life from a horrible relationship with her husband, and suddenly she found happiness in the arms of another woman I don't know what to say about that, except of, first of all, I understand you, sister. I'm happy that you're happy. I don't know what to say. Okay, yes, the Torah, it's written over there that it's not allowed. I'm not allowing it. I'm not saying that it, I'm not permitting. I'm not, uh, 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 I don't have the power to change rules that have been set by the Torah. But also to say that she's sinning and that she's wrong, it, I don't know about that. I'm not able to judge. So I explained, yeah, I remember. So I explained that in that class, and we got awesome, awesome uh, um, um, response to, to, to that video. And thousands, thousands of people watched that video and were very, very impressed by, by my open mind opinion that is not changing anything by the rules of the halakha, just opening the minds of the people to have patience to situations of people, that people are going through strugglings and, and so thank God we had very amazing, amazing response to that video and uh, after it we, we made another video that was uh, even more complex but also received a wonderful response. I was talking about, um, about relationship, sex in, in the Jewish world that people are very, very far, far from understanding the real uh, concepts of love between a couple. And the Froom community is very, very strict and, let's say, in careful uh, words, um, not sensitive to the emotions of, of, of the people that are involved, if it's men and if it's women. women. And so I spoke about that and I was uh, very hard and explaining it that we need to give a place to our hearts, to our emotions. And thank God all of those videos that we're talking about the truth and we're uncovering things that are hidden and not, uh, not supposed to be talked about, completely not politically correct, are uh, receiving very good response and uh, thank God we're going with that, continuing. Yes? Uh, Reason for a person to talk to Hashem? I think that the fear to talk to Hashem is not the fear to talk to Hashem. I think it's the fear to feel your feelings. It's the fear to be aware to yourself, to see yourself. It's going to expose you. When you're going to start talking, no matter if you're going to talk to me or to him, or to yourself, you're going to expose yourself when you're going to start talking. Usually people, when they feel something, immediately they think fast and they're changing their path and they're going to another direction and they're just, you know, they're programming themselves, they're deciding very fast. Before they even come to feel what that they are about to feel, what that they really feel inside, they're blocking themselves. So that conversation is just forcing you 
to reveal yourself and to open yourself. So for a lot of people, a lot of people are so afraid to, to, to find their own uh, identity, to know who they are. When I realize that I'm about to do tshuva, that I'm about, as a secular person, that I'm about to change my lifestyle and to start being religious and keeping Shabbat, and it was a nightmare for me. Really, for me, it was a night. I was crying to Hashem. I was crying. I remember those days. I was crying to Him, why are you doing that to me? What am I going to tell my parents? When I said to my father that I'm about to keep Shabbat, he told me, don't make a joke out of yourself, and went. When I said it to my mother, she told me, I would rather you to be gay and not to be religious. That was her answer. When I felt it coming, I knew that that's going to be their answer. And I was afraid of it. I knew I won't be able to go with my friends. I lost my connection with most of my friends, maybe 90% of them. They didn't want to talk to me anymore when I decided to change my life. I couldn't continue in my old job and I was making a lot of money. Everything changed. And I knew it. I felt it like I'm about to live my life and to go somewhere else. So I was very afraid from that. But my inner point, inner will to become, to be who that I am, this is me. I wanted it so badly that I decided to sacrifice all of my old relationship. You know how many phone calls I made to people? To, 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 to women to tell them, please, let's not, let's not, we, we, we're not going to talk anymore, that's it, I'm getting married. I, I was just making phone calls after phone calls. What could I do? I couldn't. I was receiving phone calls in the middle of the night. I had to say, hi, how are you? I'm sorry. I'm getting married. She said, okay, so I said, no, that's it. I'm, I'm not going to be able to be in touch with you anymore. Hey, why? But it's okay. You're getting married. No, listen, I'm doing tshuva So All of those situations are not so comfortable. And when you choose that kind of path in your life, you're going to deal with it, you're going to confront it, you're going to meet it with all of your friends, with all of your company, with all of your people. So when you start finding who that you are, sometimes it's, it's very, you know, a person is afraid to, it's going to obligate you to make some steps to change your life. So. A lot of people are afraid to talk to God because they feel that it's going to bring them to, it's going to obligate them to something. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was just your mirror speaking to you from the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Yes. Right. Right. To do anything, the show could be saying, "Okay, I have to struggle with you, but you have to go and do." So, how do you balance? So, my first advice to you is to search in YouTube my class from yesterday. By the by, the date you can check it, and I was talking about that yesterday. Um, but I'm gonna tell you that. The level of hishtadlut means effort that you need to put in life, in physical hishtadlut, to try to make money, to work, to go, to talk to people, to talk to the lawyer, not only to pray, to pray, to pray, depends on the level of your faith, your level of confidence. How you are going to know what is your level, how much you should put effort, how much effort you should put in the spiritual effort like prayers and maybe you should reduce in those hours of prayers and maybe you should go to work for several hours every day. How you're going to balance? The thing that you should measure is the level of happiness that you have inside of yourself. If by losing that job you're going to fall to a horrible sadness and stress, it's not your level yet. Try, go, pray for it. If you felt after the prayer that you found a lot of confidence and you know that God is with you and your level of faith rised, so go with that. And you're happy now to go to the fields and to pray, great, go with that. But if when you're looking back you say, hey, but what I'm going to do, so go with that. And even if you're going to struggle and even if you're going to work on both, both, uh, you're going to dance in two weddings, you're also going to pray and also going to work, also going to pray for health and also going to go and check in a, with the doctor once in a while, it's okay. Because as long as you're aware to yourself, you're aware to your fears, you're aware to your weaknesses and you're working with them with Hashem, on them with Hashem, you're okay. You don't need to change. That's exactly what we were talking about. 
You're not supposed to move to be a spiritual being. No. You need to develop. You need to grow. You need to feel good with yourself. So I am a person that is not able to count only on Hashem in Parnassah because I'm afraid to be left alone and that my prayers will not go be, gonna be answered and I don't know what to do and it's very stressful for me and I must work 12 hours, 16 hours every day. Okay, great. In the end of the day, do that. That's your healing. That's your confidence. Great. After those 16 hours, when you came home and you made yourself your coffee, sit and say to Hashem, Barach Hashem, if I need to work, I'm happy to work. Just please let me work with a smile on my face and not to be stressful all day long. If that's my mission, if I need to be a nurse, if I need to be a lawyer, if that's my mission, maybe I'm going to find myself over there. Maybe I'm going to help some people. Maybe that's my mission. Let me live. Let me not be afraid of my boss. Let me not working for people. Let me work in serving you. Let me be who that I am over there. Talk about it with Hashem. Bring your life to Hashem. Bring Hashem into your life. This is the answer. The level of happiness and what that gives you strength and power, that's what you should look for in life. Hashem doesn't want you to be an angel. He would make you an angel if He would want you to be one. He doesn't want to change you. He wants you to feel His presence with you in your life. Feel close to him that you can talk to him on everything that you go through. Um, is it considered to put enough into talk to Hashem in your head, or do you actually have to it's 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 not considered hit bodedut. It calls hit bonenut observation. You look at yourself, it's also an amazing thing, it's a wonderful thing. A lot of groups in Judaism were talking about that as a very important thing that will bring you to yourself for sure. It can do the same, but it's very hard to keep focus while you're thinking. Your thoughts can wander and run away to other places very fast. When you're talking, the voice of your words bring you to certain intention that you remember where you're holding. And then you're not wandering from one thought to the other. You were talking, let's say, about your married life. You talked about money. You talked about your fears. Now you know that you're ho when you said, Hashem, I'm afraid to be left alone. After you said that word, for sure your thoughts will want to run to Hawaii, to somewhere else, for sure. You, it's going to be very hard to say those words to Hashem. Okay, if you haven't said it and you just thought about it and then you were in Hawaii, so it was very good for you to be now in Hawaii. You feel good. But if you remember that the last word that you said was Hashem, I'm afraid to be alone, and suddenly you find yourself in Hawaii, so you understand that something was wrong here, and then you have a place to come back to. You say, okay, Hashem, I tried to run away, but, you know, again, I'm afraid to stay alone. Can you help me with that? And that's the right way. When you talk, it wakes up the, the memory. You hear yourself. And you need to talk quietly. We're not saying, Hashem, please help. No, you talk like that. What's going on with me? Help me. Be quiet. Like you pray Shimon Eisle, Like you pray the regular prayers from the Siddur. Just talking. When you talk, it's going to help you. You're going to feel it. It's a very good thing to do. Yes. Again, the same answer from a different topic, from a different side, your happiness. You have your soul. Your soul is your source of life, your desire to live, your happiness, your joy, your satisfaction. That's your soul. If you work in a place that you know that it's bad for you, but you know that it's good for you to work over there because there you have a lot of money coming in from that job, it's not you. Those are your fears. But if you go over there and you see the smiles of those children that you're helping them and you support them and you, you're not making enough money and you have those thoughts that are telling you that you maybe need to go and work somewhere else but you cannot leave those children, so this is you. You understand? You need to follow your inner feelings. God is good. So what that is good inside, it's from Him. It's your soul. The world is... Yetzirah that is coming to mislead us, to confuse us. So everything that is bad inside is the voices of the Yetzirah. 
it's not you. Fears, anxieties, sadness, depression, angers, frustrations, it's not you. Even if it tells you that that's the right way, it's not you. Happiness, confidence, goodwill, positive will, holy, holy excitements and happiness and joy, that's you. Feeling calm and relaxed and sure, that's you. It's a process to find it. You have a lot of situations, one like this, one like that, one day you're like this, one day like that. This is why I said that that conversation has to be on a daily basis. Every day you need to review your life, to bring your life in front of your eyes and to judge them with the eyes of faith. Thank you very much. God bless you all. God bless America. Be happy. Guys, I'm asking please if each and every one of you can help us to support our amazing nonprofit organization, Amuna Project. We have our flyers here, booklets, CDs. We're giving them all for free. You can check us out in the website, in all of the social media, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and all of the rest of the junk. You can find us all over the website, all of the web. Thank you very much. Bukhim to you. Thank you, guys. Thank <laughs> you.